the A320 family is equipped with International Aero Engines, IAE, V2500 series engines. Like most engines today, this engine comprises a low-pressure LP compressor stage, a high-pressure HP compressor stage, a combustion chamber, and a turbine stage. The front fan, the low-pressure compressor, and the low-pressure turbine are connected to form the low-speed rotor N1. The high-pressure compressor and the high-pressure turbine are connected to form the high-speed rotor N2. The accessory gearbox is located at the bottom of the fan case and is driven by the high-pressure rotor. The combustion chamber is equipped with two igniters, called A and B. Each engine is equipped with a full authority digital engine control system, FADEC, which provides complete engine management. For redundancy, each FADEC has two channels, A and B, one active and one in standby. Each engine has reversers, which are hydraulically actuated. The engines are controlled by thrust levers, which are located on the center pedestal. These two levers control the reversers. The auto thrust can be disconnected with either of these red push buttons, which are called instinctive disconnect push buttons. The controls for engine starting and shutdown are located on the center pedestal just behind the thrust levers. The engine master switches and the engine mode selector enable the pilots for Engine automatic and manual starting, engine ventilation, dry cranking, and engine shutdown. Once the engines are running, the mode selector can also provide continuous ignition. The panel has also a fire and fault light for each engine. On the overhead panel, there is an additional panel which is used for manual start and in abnormal operation. For all these controls, indications are displayed on the engine warning display and engine ECAM page. The engines also have a fire protection system. You will see the complete operation of this system in the ATIA 26 Fire Protection Chapter. Let's look at the things that you need to know about the engines during normal operation. As soon as the aircraft is powered, the fade decks are automatically on for 5 minutes. They provide some engine indications on the engine warning display. After 5 minutes, the fade decks shut down automatically. And all the engine indications change from normal to amber. Let's first talk about manual engine start. There are several reasons why a manual start may be required, including low pneumatic pressure. The main difference between a manual and an automatic start is that the pilot controls the time at which fuel and ignition are supplied to the engine. The FADEC only provides passive monitoring of the engine during the start sequence. This means that the pilots take on the responsibility to prevent an abnormal start. The FADEC only controls 
the position of the HP fuel valve, and ignition operation, when the associated engine master switch is on. The closure of the start valve, at 33% and 2. Ignition cut off, on the ground. Note, manual starts are completed by using the procedure, detailed in the FCOM Pro Sub 70 section. Let's start the engines using the automatic engine start procedure. During the cockpit preparation, you checked that the thrust levers are in the idle position. This is to prevent excessive thrust at engine start. During the start sequence, all the engine parameters are monitored, controlled and protected by the FADEX. APU is running. In order to start the engines, the engine mode selector must first be switched to ignition start. Start the engines. When ignition start is selected, the FADEX are powered again. This is indicated on the engine warning display by the indications which change from amber to normal. On the system display, the ECAM engine page is automatically presented for more engine indications, also called secondary parameters. Let's now look at the engine indications specifically. The first indications on the engine warning display are the engine pressure ratio, EPR, for each engine. Both indicators are identical. The green needle indicates the actual EPR. This value is also displayed digitally. The blue circle represents the EPR related to the thrust lever position. The amber mark represents the maximum EPR. This is the EPR that would be produced with the thrust levers fully forward. On the right side of the engine warning display, the thrust limit mode and EPR rating limit are displayed. This will be explained and demonstrated as the mode changes later in the module. The next set of indicators display the exhaust gas temperature, EGT, of each engine. The green needle indicates the actual EGT. This value is also displayed digitally. The amber tick indicates the maximum EGT. Max EGT. Note, depending on the engine version, the amber tick will disappear during engine start or during takeoff. The fuel flow is displayed digitally for each engine. Let's look now at the indications on the ECAM engine page. The first indication displayed is the fuel used by each engine. Notice that there is a fuel used indication and the engines haven't been started. This is because this value is frozen at engine shutdown and reset on the ground at engine start. The next indications are the engine oil quantity, the oil pressure, and the oil temperature. Vibration indications are displayed below the oil temperature. There are additional indications displayed during engine start on the ground. They are only displayed when the engine mode selector is in the ignition start or crank position. They are the start valve position indication. The air pressure available for start. When the engines are started, the valve indications are removed, as shown. Note, this blanked area will be also used to display the nacelle temperature when at least one is above the advisory threshold. We will start the engines using the available APU bleed as indicated on the memo and the pressure indication at the bottom of the system display. We start engine 2 first, 
because the yellow hydraulic system engine driven pump is on engine 2 and the yellow system supplies park brake pressure. Switch on engine 2. The corresponding start valve opens. This is indicated by the start valve indication changing from green cross line to green in line. The fuel used is reset to zero. On the engine warning display, N2 increases. It is displayed on a grey background. On the ECAM engine page, the oil pressure increases. As N2 increases, N1 will be displayed. Approximately 30 seconds after selecting engine 2 master switch on, an igniter is powered. The active igniter is indicated by a letter, A or B, on the ECAM engine page. Note, the igniters alternate on successive starts. On the engine warning display, we see that the fuel begins to flow. When the fuel is ignited, the EGT increases. When N2 reaches 43%, the start valve closes and the ignition is switched off. Notice on the ECAM engine page the start valve is closed and the igniter indication disappears. N2 continues to increase. At approximately 58%, it stabilizes and the grey background disappears, indicating that the start sequence is finished. Engine 2 is now running and all its parameters have stabilized. As soon as one engine is started, the limit mode changes to toga or flex if temperature has been entered on the MCDU performance takeoff page. Also the gross weight is displayed. On the N1 gauge, the green needle indicates the actual N1. This value is also displayed digitally. Let's start engine 1 now. We will show you the full sequence without stopping. Start engine 1. Start valve opens. Fuel used is reset. N2 increases. 30 seconds after the start master switch was put on, an igniter is powered. Fuel flow begins. EGT increases. When N2 is approximately 43%, the start valve closes, and the ignition is switched off. At about 58%, N2 stabilizes and the grey background disappears indicating that the engine 1 start sequence is finished. For both engines all parameters have stabilized. At ECC level, idle parameters should be. N1 about 21.4%, EGT about 414 degrees Celsius, N2 about 57.8%, fuel flow about 350 kilograms per hour or 775 pounds per hour, EPR about 1.01. .01. The last action is to switch the engine mode selector to normal. Switch the engine mode selector to normal. On the system display, the ECAM engine page is replaced by the ECAM wheel page. Note, after start, to avoid thermal shock, it is recommended that the engines are operated at or near idle for at least two minutes. This ends the engine automatic start sequence. This is a demonstration of an in-flight loss of EPR mode. It will be replaced by N1 mode. This reversion is called rated N1 mode. If additional parameters to compute EPR are not available,
The degraded mode is called unrated N1 mode. You are the pilot non-flying. You are in cruise. Everything is normal. The amber caution and associated checklist are displayed on the engine warning display. Read the title of the failure. When EPR is lost, the auto thrust is disconnected. The EPR indicator is amber and the value is crossed amber, showing that EPR1 mode is lost. The pilot flying will ask you to perform the ECAM actions. Please perform ECAM action. On the engine panel, the ON label on the engine 1 N1 mode push button switch illuminates blue. On the engine warning display, let's look at the N1 indicator. The actual N1 is shown both numerically and by the needle, in green. They pulse red when N1 is greater than 100%. The blue circle indicates the thrust lever position. It is not displayed in unrated mode. The amber index indicates the full forward position of the thrust lever, max N1. Max N1 is not displayed in unrated mode. Continue ECAM action. The Engine 2 EPR indication turns amber, indicating that the EPR mode is lost. The N1 indications are now the same for both engines. The EPR limit mode is replaced by a specific N1 limit mode box, showing clearly that the engines are controlled in the N1 mode. In unrated mode, the N1 mode and N1 limit mode are crossed amber. The next action is to adjust the thrust manually, depending on the request. We will assume that this has been done. ECAM actions complete. Let's look briefly at some other engine abnormal indications. The amber caution is displayed on the engine warning display. Read the title of the failure. On the system display, the ECAM engine page is automatically displayed. The oil filter indication appears and the clog in amber indicates the corresponding oil filter. The same kind of message can occur with the fuel system. The amber caution is displayed on the engine warning display. On the system display, the ECAM engine page is automatically displayed. The fuel filter indication appears, and the clog in amber indicates the corresponding fuel filter 